Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Uh, coming up on this week's show, Commonsell release another banging looking bike. That Troy D4 finally breaks cover and some more cool stuff. Okay, so straight into news, and first up, of course, is going to be that Troy Lee D4. Uh, we mentioned it a few times on the show, we've seen some sneak peeks, and it's alive and kicking. Uh, there's two models there's the composite model, which retails for around 399 US dollars, and there's an all singing and dancing carbon fiber model, uh, which retails for 575 US dollars. Uh, here's a glance of a few of them on screen. I think you'll probably agree with me, they look pretty amazing, as Troy Lee helmets tend to. Um, some pretty cool features. So the carbon model features the Textream carbon. So they've basically collaborated with Textream, who make this armored carbon. Uh, really interesting stuff. It's a very premium product. Uh, it's now featuring a MIPS C2 system. That's on both models of helmet. Of course, there's six different sizes available as well, from extra small through to double XL. And they achieve that through three sizes of shell and three different, uh, basically the three different uh, EPS liners have gone on the inside to give you the different combinations of sizing. Now venting is something quite cool about this. Now this is a full downhill helmet and it's got almost the most amount of vents I've ever heard of on a full face. So there's 24 vents in total. So there's 11 on the front, so 11 intakes. It's got six vents on the top and then on the rear, it's got seven exhaust ports. I'm pretty sure that's like the most anyone's had on a helmet that offers that much protection. Um, I'd love to see what these things are like in the flesh and try them on. I've always been a fan of the Troy Lee helmets. They managed to just make them really desirable. Uh, they've got titanium double D uh, chin loops there. Obviously the D system is really good because it's renowned from motorcycle use around the world and motorsport. Uh, any, basically any paramedic or medic is trained on how to remove those. So uh, especially a good system I think to see in place. Um, and it's also got an EPP collarbone protecting protection system built into them, which is quite cool. Now on some riders using a slightly bigger helmet or perhaps an extra bit shorter or whatever, in certain injuries or certain crashes, they're finding the helmets can strike them on their collarbones and cause injury. Uh, that's been taken into account with the design of the new helmet just to help soften that. Um, really cool, really nice looking helmets. Got to say, the composite one though for 399, can be pretty hard to beat. So especially if you consider the last little cool fact is both of them are the lightest helmets that they've ever made in their respective categories there. The carbon one, uh, I think it weighs 1,000 and, yeah, 1,000 grams for a size medium. Uh, the composite though, it's only 1,050 grams for a medium, so it's not a lot heavier. Uh, and at that price, that's a bit of a steal by all accounts. Okay, another banging bike from Common Cell. This is the Meta TRSX. Uh, look at the thing, it looks amazing. So you've got a coil shock on there, it's 29 -er. this one's got tan walls on it. Um, I'm a tan wall lover. Um, I did actually put a post on my Instagram ask if people like tan walls. Um, pretty divided actually, by all accounts. Uh, but this one looks great. So it's a single pivot, linkage activated, a design that they've managed to work really well for them. Uh, it's running 140 out back, 150 up front, again with a 29. Um, sizing is really decent on these now. So from 435 to 500 mil reach across the board. Uh, I don't think the Common Cell want a brand that want to go any bigger than that 500 mil reach on the XL. The 500 gives the bike that perfect playfulness, um, and I think you can guess that as well. We're looking at the thing, and of course, it's running a coil shock on there, so it's going to have a nice level of what they'd say a nice level of grip and playful responsiveness on the small bumps. Uh, also, a really good shock for doing jumps and stuff on, uh, which is what people seem to favor on the common cells. It's a 66 and a half degree head angle on there, and it's got 434 mil chain stays out back. I don't know about you guys, but Common Cell kind of do it for me. They've got that thing. Um, do you love or loathe Common Cell? Let us know in those comments underneath. Over to Transition bikes now with a new version of the Scout. Uh, Transition kind of seems to be a bit of a privateer favorite as far as bike brands go. Uh, undoubtedly cool. Those guys behind the bike brand uh, certainly know what they're doing. Uh, this is a Scout on screen now and it's in its newest guise. I'll say that because previously it had 125 mil travel out back with a 140 mil fork. Really playful, really fun, great to jump. Maybe you get a little bit sort of outdone on some of the choppier stuff, but that's not really what the bike was for. They had other models in the range. In 2018, it grew to 130 mil travel out back with a 150 fork, and now it's 140 out back with a 150 mil fork. So, a bit more of a bruiser. Now, this one is firmly on 27 and a half inch wheels. Again, a few more great shots now. Uh, it's got a 64 degree head angle, so that's pretty progressive with a 77 degree seat angle. So that is an ideal bike for climbing up those steep fire roads and stuff and smashing back down the tracks. 430 mil chainstay, uh, and it's quite a roomy bike actually. So the XL is a 510. Um, I talk about reach on the XLs quite a lot. Obviously, I'm quite a lofty guy. Um, my nuke proof is 515, just to give you uh, 
little sort of idea there. There are bikes that are longer, including the Polo bikes. Um, I've not actually received mine yet, but you're talking that it's going to be similar length to, to theirs, sometimes on a medium, let alone the large or the extra larges. But for most normal bikes, the transition is up there. Uh, sizing, of course, is from XS all the way through to XL. And interestingly, they've changed the way the back end feels on the bike. It's a bit more of a rising rate, so that means you can put a coil shock on it and you'll be able to maximise on it. It's still ramping up nicely without having to use things like progressive springs, but I guess if you're still bottom and map, you can go to those as well. I think it's a lovely looking bike. Now, you might know that we're working with Muckoff now, which suits me because it's a bit of a tech head. They've got loads of gear. Uh, now, the other day I was chatting to them and thinking, oh, there's a few things I kind of wish you guys made. And uh, already they've come in with, they've got some dot brake fluid. Uh, I'm hoping there might be some other brake fluids coming from them down the line. They're also doing a copper compound now. That's a proper workshop spec stuff. So that's an anti-seize. You can use that on all sorts of different bikes. Now, more importantly though, is the really cool stuff, which is still in a prototyping stage. So I've got myself some muck off suspension grease. Uh, that's clearly not the packaging it's gonna be coming in and some suspension lube. Um, I'm literally about to try those this afternoon, gonna do a lower leg service and see how slick they are. Uh, but I've got high hopes because I've been chatting to their tech guys down there and they've got some proper men in white coats working on some really interesting new products. Uh, also actually, Muckoff are now doing technical clothing and uh, are branching out into the world of like waterproof jackets and stuff. Uh, and they look amazing as well. So here's, here's some of the stuff on screen. So the waterproof jacket is actually a polar tech, so it's windproof and it's breathable. They're, but they're doing shorts, they're doing riding gloves, they're doing jerseys. There's a whole bunch of cool things that they're making. Um, it certainly seems that that brand is going under some sort of growth at the moment because last week we were talking about the fact they're doing those technical riding bags that are very much like the military webbing style bags, modular, you add on blocks. And now they've got the waterproof jackets and everything. Hmm, I wonder what's next from those guys. Um, over to some kids bike stuff now actually. So a couple of weeks back we reported on the fact that Nootproof are about to launch their new Cub Scout range, uh, which is a 20, a 24 and a 26 inch wheel bike available, each of them in two different specs. One rigid and one with a suspension fork on the front. Uh, really aggressive, playful little bikes and they had this amazing launch video of kids sending it. It was so cool. Definitely a brand that's thinking about the kids of tomorrow, so you know, the, the next riders that are gonna hit our scene. And another brand doing that is YT. I mean, after all, it does stand for Young Talent. Now they're doing a kids version of the Jeff C. This is it on screen. Uh, it's available in 24 inch and 26 inch. I think it looks badass. Look at the spec on this thing. She's got those Manitou machete forks on there. Uh, the size between the two of them to fit from four foot four up to about five foot two. The shocks on them are tuned with a light tune, so much more suitable for lighter weight riders, of course. And depending on the position of the flip chip, you're looking between 65 and a half and 66 degree head angles. Alloy frames, so nice and robust there. No need to worry about crash damage, which of course, kids can crash their brains out while they're like learning new tricks and stuff. They just look amazing little things. I'd be stoked to have had one of those when I was growing up. I had a steel bike, I've talked about it before, it weighed probably more than I did at the time. Uh, so kids these days really have the best thing. And I reckon in 10 years time, mountain biking is gonna be so progressive, you won't even realize just how fast and sick those riders are gonna be. Uh, super exciting stuff, I think. Straight into Bike Cave, and um, you know the drill, this is where you keep your bikes, where you work on your bikes, um, you talk geeky stuff about bikes. Uh, send them in, the link to the uploader is right there. Uh, first up this week, this one's kind of a cool angle. This is from Max at Fort Collins in Colorado, uh, arguably one of the homes of mountain biking, really, from the early days. I recently moved into my room and I realized I had no place to put my bike, so this is my solution. Uh, it's two command hooks and two hair ties. Uh, well, that's a great solution. So you open the door and it's in there on the left. I guess that's taken from underneath for like it's some sort of bunk bed, it looks like, but with a cool strip lighting around it. It's good, you've got your snowboards up on the right there as well. It looks like you've got some skate decks there as well. Nice, mate. You could do a bit more furniture though. It's like, it's like you or your mate sat on the floor doing some work. Get out on the bike, don't worry about that stuff. It's not important. Next up's from Johnny in North Lincolnshire. Uh, my little bike cave in my shed. Not the biggest, but I love it. It doesn't have to be big, it just has to be functional space, and that looks really functional. A decent looking roll cab there, and another one actually, uh, just a static cab on this shelf. Nice decent bench there with, uh, you've got your blue shop towel, it looks like you've got some windscreen cleaner up at the top there for your car as well, some disc rotors. You've even got some a whiteboard there with jobs to do. That's a good idea, I could do something like that in mind. I've always got a million things to do, and kind of always just lose track of them, because my list just kept getting bigger and bigger. But uh, looking good. Uh, your mobile sort of work stand, you pack it away to keep it out of the way and it looks like you've got some sort of jet wash down there. What's that, is that a Moby wash or something, something like that? Can't quite tell, but uh, looking good. 
Yeah, and uh, maximising on your space by hanging your bikes up vertically so they're not encroaching into your workspace too much. And all importantly, you've got some carpet on the floor to catch all the juices that come off your bikes. Uh, next up is from Jason in Chicago. Um, needed some more space due to N plus one. Yep, that's a familiar problem. Um, so I used to black pipe and old tubes to make some simple bike hangers. Uh, we'll need to add a few more once my son starts to ride. He helps me work on the bikes in our basement shop. Dude, this is like a rad setup. I love those feedback sports work stands, by the way. They're mega lightweight. I used to have one of those many moons ago. Um, not sure what happened to that, actually. So bench looks good. I like the little rubber park tool, sort of a uh, working parts holder thing there. Always good. You've got four inch vice there, loads of cone spanners, so you're clearly into maintaining your bikes there. It's nice to see, actually. Don't really see many bikes where you need a lot of cone spanners these days, uh, becoming less and less common. But it's a real kitted out tool board, that's for sure. And just about everything. You've got brake cleaner up there, so that's CLC brake cleaner, it's like a automotive stuff, but uh, that'll do the trick, that's for sure. And um, yeah, there's, there's all your bikes. You've got Diamondback, Trek, another Diamondback, and a little road bike hanging up in the corner there. Um, I don't know whose that is. Is that your wife's? Maybe. It's quite small compared to the other bikes. It looks cool though. Nice looking setup. Uh, next up is from Harry in Petersburg. Hi Dolly, this is my bike cave. It used to be an old grain store, but last year I converted it into my bike cave. I've got all my old parts hanging up and on display and some some LEDs under the workbench. Yeah, that is great. I like all your, your tire storage there. Being in the UK, we change the tires quite a lot generally. Uh, so our conditions change. The old muck off mat there, catching all the uh, oil and stuff off your chain. I used to rely on that before I had my own workshop as such because uh, I used to keep my bikes pretty much in the front room. And uh, I've ruined carpet in the, in the past and uh, kind of got in trouble for that. I'm not too sure about your dartboard placement right above your bike there. I wouldn't want to have a beer and play darts in your your bike cave. Not that you should play uh, darts after beer, but darts seems to be a pub sport, doesn't it? So it kind of goes hand in hand, I guess. Uh, awesome, looks great, mate. I love your uh, your cut-up bike box there. It says ride, eat, sleep, repeat on it. Uh, and Harry written above the door. Looking great, nice little setup there. And the neons, or the LEDs, that's a good, good tip. Awesome setup there, Harry. Thanks for sending that in. A uh, few more pictures than I thought going through there. Uh, lovely looking Santa Cruz there, by the way. Big fan of those. Okay, now it's time for Rewind. This is where we get to uh, go back in time and look at some of the old stuff, basically. Um, I referenced Muckoff earlier on the show, and actually that got me thinking. Uh, I'm pretty sure on one of the earliest tech shows I've shown you some of these pictures, but uh, I was having a dig for the old hard drive and found some pictures from when I went to visit them back in 2015. Now, Muckoff, I'm not sure if you're aware, but it actually was originally just a single product by a company called x -Lite. Now, x -Lite was started by Rex Trimnall. He's an ex-motorcycle racer, a hell of a guy by all accounts, and it's now run by his son, Alex Trimnall. Now, he's kind of the brains behind the company these days that has really transformed it, I would say. Bearing in mind that x -Lite was a parts manufacturer, and on screen, you're gonna start seeing some really cool stuff, uh, including suspension forks. I had the Wampa. Um, by all accounts, that was an amazing fork at the time. I think they did just about get them to manufacturing, but you bear in mind it's a very small British company making this stuff that was way ahead. I had a downhill bike called the uh, DHR World Cup bike, or DHR WBB, I think it was called, uh, WCB even, if I forget my English language right there. Uh, ignore the crazy geometry, the BB is a bit high and it's a bit short and it's a bit steep, but that's kind of what we were doing in the 90s when it was in a very experimental side of the sport. Skipping forward a few years, um, and basically the Muckoff product itself in the range was just known as Bike Cleaner originally. Uh, and Muckoff was kind of like a sub-brand off from the x -Lite range. Uh, it was the most popular thing they used to sell, so Alex actually rebranded the whole company as Muckoff and actually went fully in with the black and pink thing. Uh, and just a few more images on screen here. So there's a Steve Pete stem there. In fact, I've got one of those tucked away. Uh, laser etched on there. It's a really nice bit of kit back in the day with the old fat bars that Steve used to race on. Uh, another one of their downhill bikes, single pivot. That one's actually got a motocross shock on there. Really cool stuff to see. And, and there's a, a great shot there of some of the early stuff that Exolite used to do. So chicken sticks, skewers, there was the knurled bar end, so you'd have Onzas or you'd have Exolite back in the day. That's pretty much what you had. Um, the brake levers as well. All sorts of really cool stuff. Um, and then this is a cool shot. They, you can even buy this stuff in sort of um, places like Boots and Superdrug in the in holiday season. They're doing like uh, body wash and scrub and stuff like that. It's really turned into an incredible brand considering it just started making a few CNC parts for bikes. Look at that chainring. That's, that's a XTR 46 tooth for downhill competition. 
you ever went down a hill on a mountain bike off-road that you span out a 46 tooth chain ring? Uh, it's probably the Kamikaze, it's the only one in the world. And there's that crazy DHR WCB again. Um, what a bike. I mean, of course, you might laugh it up with that saddle position on there, because it's got the seat mast, it's all built into one thing, but you can kind of tell that the, the company had roots in motocross and motorsports with that sort of engineering. Amazing to see, it really is. They've got all sorts of cool stuff like chain testing facilities. So they actually test the friction of different lubricants on chains and they subject their testing situations to different types of elements like salt, uh, to stimulate salt on the road, sand and grit, so the sort of stuff you'd get with mud that would slow it down and wear it out. Dry lubes, wet lubes, paraffins, waxes, uh, really interesting stuff. And uh, like I say, I'll be heading down there soon. So if there's anything you want to know, let us know. And now it's time for Tech of the Week. Um, by far the coolest thing we've been talking about recently are Intend forks. Now you might have seen these inverted forks around before. Uh, they've got a new one called New Age. Uh, this is it on screen. So they're available in 27 and a half and 29 inch models. And they've got adjustable travel from 80 up to 180. I think they come as 180 and you take the travel down by an internal spacer system on them. Uh, hell of a fork. Like It weighs 2,130 grams in the 29. 2085 gram in the 27 and a half. You can adjust air pressure, progression, low speed compression, and low speed rebound on them. Now the whole theory between, behind having an inverted fork, um, or in, in a motorcycle world, you'd actually say it's the correct way up, and our forks would be inverted. In a motorcycle world, you have the bigger part of the fork up top, the slider, and the stanchions actually would be at the bottom holding the fork axle, just like these. The reason for that, quite simply, is you need more mass at the top of the fork. That's where all the flex comes from. Of course, in the bike world, trying to make things light enough and secure the front wheel to the axle, originally it was quick release back in the day when people started developing suspension forks. You couldn't do it like that. So we are actually, what we call the right way up, is technically the wrong way up. Um, but there you go. Uh, I've, I really like this sort of analogy on their website. They're comparing their fork design to a tree. You think how a tree is big at the bottom and it's small at the top. It allows it to flex up top, but it doesn't move at the bottom. It's kind of what they're getting at with how strong and stiff the front of the bike is, uh, which you especially notice under braking, to be fair. And definitely something I think um, Fox might be sort of trying to combat with that 38 mil stanchioned fork that they've not been able to confirm exists that might be coming out soon. Uh, but I think this is a really interesting approach. And they also offer on the Intend fork two different axles. You can have a lighter one or you can have a heavier duty one, which is heavier and stiffer by all accounts there. They're also quite interesting. They're knurled on each end. So the interface of the axle on an inverted fork like this is absolutely key to make it stiff. And if it's got a knurled surface, that's even more for the clamps to get hold of and even less chance of any flex that you might be able to feel at the handlebars. But don't forget, you don't also want something to be completely rigid. You do need an element of flex there. Otherwise, it's gonna be so hard to hold onto. Now, we've always talked before in the past of, say, a RockShox Boxer against a Fox 40. The 40 is a very stiff fork. Personally, I find uh, the 40 quite hard, uh, quite a harsh ride because it's quite a stiff fork. I mean, it's an incredible fork, but uh, it's not like I ride downhill that much. A boxer is easier for me to get on. It's got a little bit more flex you can feel, and I feel like I can kind of thread it through the gap a little bit more. Whereas the Fox, you've basically got to hold on and hold a line. Uh, no doubt they're going to suit different style riders, um, but this inverted design that the Intend manufacturers are doing, I think it's amazing, a lovely piece of kit. And they've actually answered some of the issues from previous models. Uh, so it's got more mass on the crown, so it's even stronger. It's now e-bike safe or e-bike certified. It's got CNC made adjusters on the top of the fork there, improved cable routing, lower friction, SKF seals on there, longer bushings as well to spread the load and ensure that there's gonna be more support for those sliders and the stanchions like the interface there. Um, I think it just looks incredible. What a lovely piece of kit. We're actually gonna be making some changes to the GMBN Tech Show over the coming weeks. We've got a brand new set being built at the moment and we're gonna restructure our weekly show. So we'd love to hear from you guys. Um, you're the ones that watch it, we're here for you. So you tell us what you'd love to see on the show. Things you wanna see more of, things you wanna see less of, any great ideas you might have that we can incorporate. I say we, it's Minor Henry Show, we wanna bring you the best tech every week. So stay tuned, thanks for subscribing and hanging around as always, but please let us know what you wanna see and we'll make it.